Let's paint up the Hundred Kingdoms Priory Commander and the Order of the Crimson Tower. I start out by priming everything in black. I use an airbrush, but an aerosol will work too. Be sure to prime it from all directions, top and bottom, and everywhere around. Next, I use Army Painter's Gun Metal Metallic Paint. I combine this with 50% Flow Improver, and I mix it up real good. This is going to be shot out of my airbrush onto areas that are silver, which is a lot of silver on these models. Mainly all the barding on the horses, as well as the heavy plate mail that each of the knights wears. Now you don't need an airbrush to do this. You can do this with silver paint out of an aerosol can, but an airbrush is much more precise. Paint the silver on more from a 45 degree angle. If there's areas underneath that are black, just consider it shadow. Next, I'm going to use matte white and a makeup brush. And I'm going to dry brush the white onto all the areas that I did not paint silver. Why am I using a brush instead of an airbrush? Well, it just affords me a lot more control. If I had used an airbrush for these areas, I might overspray onto the silver areas that I had done before. So I resort to dry brushing instead. It's almost as fast and it's very macro, so you should be able to cover a lot of surface fairly quickly. This matte white color will be applied onto several areas. The rider's cloaks, onto all the legs, the snout, and anything that's exposed on the horses. There's also like a hanging cloth that's underneath the barding. And the banner obviously will get this white dry brush as well. We'll be putting a lot of brighter colors on top of it. Also, don't forget the dry brush, the saddlebag, and sword sheath. Now being part of the Order of the Crimson Tower, these knights are going to be mainly red. But since I wanted to incorporate some of my army's colors into these models, which are blue and white, I will apply my army's colors onto the shield, but the rest of the model will remain red. Having said that, the cloth underneath the barding as well as hoods and cloaks will get red. And for this, I will use Slaughter Red from Army Painter. Using a fairly broad brush, I'm able to lay down a lot of color onto the areas, which are fairly big areas on these models, with red. Now, speed paints work really well out of an airbrush. However, I didn't want to overspray onto other areas. So, for this and the rest of my steps, I'm going to resort to brushes. You've seen me put this color on the cloaks, but you also want to put it on these little strips that are on the side of the knights. And then this color also goes onto the cloth underneath the barding and you want to apply it on all the locations front and back. Now about putting the color underneath the cloth, you only really need to put it in areas that you can see. The ones that are truly deep and underneath the horse, generally I just ignore. Now for the banner, I want to paint the whole banner red. It's easier probably to paint the whole banner and not worry about the details, we'll just paint over the details later. Now onto the horses. I just kept it simple. I picked four colors, which were gray, black, white, and a dark brown. And I just varied it from horse to horse. There are four horses, so four different colors. And I just used a different color on each horse. It gives them a little bit of variety. And the speed paints lay down very nicely and provide all the texturing and shadowing that you need. So you only need to put it on once and then you're done. While I was using grim black, I also applied it onto the flagpole. Next, I switched to hardened leather speed paint, and this I mainly put on the saddles, any of the saddle straps, the bridles, which I only really found on the Priory Commander, the rest of the riders didn't quite have those, and then going on, I applied this color also to the backs of the shields where there's wood paneling showing. This brown also goes onto the saddle bags, onto the sheaths of the swords, and onto any of the straps and ropes that are on the various knights right here. I continue looking through the models and I apply this brown onto handles of swords, any of the other straps, onto the stirrups, and also I use this brown on the hoofs of all the horses. Now, the color of my army, which is white and blue, are going to go on the shield. I usually split the shield in half and put white on one half and then blue on the other. This really allowed these knights, which are usually an independent fighting force, to unite with the rest of my army. I also put this color onto the tassel on top of the banner and onto this feature that adorns the top of the Priory Commander. Obviously, your army will probably have different main colors compared to mine, but these I found are very non-intrusive 
and very good locations to incorporate part of your army into this otherwise independent warband. Next, I switched to Greedy Gold Metallic Paint, and this is a great color to make these models look more special. These are, after all, an elite fighting unit. I loosely followed the box art here, and I applied this gold onto all the trimmings on the barding of the horses. And also on the Priory Commander, there is an emblem on his chest that I applied this to, and I trim his right pauldron with this as well. There is a neat screaming head emblem at the back of his helmet, and this gets gold trim also. All the hilts and the pummels of the swords also get gold trim. That includes the swords that are emblems on the various shields. On the banner, any of the symbols are also going to be gold, and I just basically take my time and carefully apply it to all of these little features on the banner. Now, you want to color between the lines, but don't be too hung up on being perfect because when we apply washes later, some of the imperfections in the painting process will vanish away. This banner looks pretty tattered up and sewn together. For all the sewing, I put matte white on the threads. I align my brush a little bit more parallel with the flag and then I just lightly touch onto the tops of the threads and that will transfer the white onto them like this. Next I move on to washes and strong tone is my favorite for this. Now what strong tone does on the silver parts of this models is that it actually makes it look a little bit faded and battle worn which is exactly the look I'm going for. So I apply this onto all the armor plates on the riders as well as the barding on the horses. I also apply washes onto any area that is not speed painted. For the speed painted areas, it is already properly shadowed and highlighted. On the banner, I only wash all the symbols and the sewings just to give them some depth. Otherwise, I leave the red alone. Next, I will highlight all the armored parts with plate mail. Now, in order to cut down on some painting time and to create a more realistic effect, you will notice that light only hits the top of the models here like when I put a flashlight to it. So when you do highlighting, don't highlight the entire model. Just highlight the surfaces that are pointing towards the zenith light source, which is directly above it. So as you see me applying the silver highlights here, I only apply it to the top of the pauldrons, the top of the helmets, top of the shields, and so on. Anything that's facing the bottom of the model does not get highlighted. Now, this is a method that is kind of counter to what you learn with maybe Games Workshop and maybe some other painting tutorials that highlight every available edge, which takes a lot of time and it's also not terribly realistic. So go ahead and only highlight the surfaces that are facing the top of the model, facing the Zenith light source, like how I'm doing here. Gunmetal is inherently darker, so applying this highlights, especially to the scales here on the barding, really allows it to pop and become a little bit more alive. But besides this highlighting, I will not be highlighting anything else because, well, that's what speed paints are for. Other features that benefit from the highlighting are the swords, the lances, and the armor suit on top of the banner. On the left is a model with armor highlights and the one on the right without. You can see the subtle differences. Onward to basing. I use this sand that I get from the dollar store. It is white and fine like this. And I apply it onto the miniature bases with Elmer's glue or a dollar store knockoff like this one. I apply it in random spots and then using an old brush, I brush it out a little bit and then I dunk it into the sand that I bought from the dollar store and this creates this look right here. On areas that did not get the sand, I use this dark flocking that you can get from Army Painter or other suppliers, apply Elmer's glue onto the areas that were barren, and then spread it out with a brush. After that, you can pinch and apply the green flocking onto the base. This creates a two-tone look like this. On the square game bases, I put Elmer's glue on all four corners, and then using the old brush, I spread them out, and then I apply the green flocking material onto those corners. And then I just tap off the excess and then that base should be all done. Protect all your hard work with some gloss varnish followed by matte varnish and after that you should be all done. Here are my Knights of the Order of the Crimson Tower 
and also their leader, the Priory Commander. Together, they form a formidable and lethal warband for my Hundred Kingdoms army. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you join me for future ones. Happy hobbying, happy gaming, I'll see you soon.